Hello, my name is Megan Lavoda, and you're listening to Psyche Design. This is the very first episode of Psyche Design, and this podcast is all about integrating your mind, cracking the code for how individuals can transform their relationships with themselves and others by integrating their psyche. We're going to talk about illuminating your shadow, healing your limiting beliefs, and navigating the collective unconscious. The integration process becomes much more manageable when we understand how our psyche functions. And that's really what this show is all about. The 16 holistic type patterns and the eight cognitive functions can be thought of as a language of the psyche. And in this episode, we're going to introduce those vocabulary terms. We're going to explore those um, components of the psyche more in depth, more in the weeds in other episodes. But if you happen to be new to personality type theory and you are just wanting to understand the lay of the land, this episode is for you. Thank you for listening and let's get on to the episode. Hello and thank you for listening to Psyche Design. Um, Thank you so much for being here. This is the very first episode of Psyche Design and I'm so excited to talk about personality as a language of the psyche. And to be quite honest with you guys, this episode I feel like has been weighing on my shoulders for months now. I have been thinking about what I want to say. I have perhaps overthought what I want to say. So bear with me just a little bit because really what this episode is, is an introduction to me opening a whole new can of worms a whole can of worms and everything that this podcast psyche design is about we're going to be talking about the 16 personality type patterns and how those patterns grow we're going to be talking about the eight cognitive processes and how these are basically the eight mental energies in your psyche that we all have access to and how using this tool can help you expand your consciousness Uh, through just expanding your awareness of what those eight cognitive processes are. So the reason why this episode has been difficult for me to even get myself to sit down and talk about, just to let you guys know, is that for so long, all of my content on my YouTube channel, I've been talking to one type of person, and that has been the personality type enthusiast. A lot of the people who already are familiar with me and are listening and you already know me from YouTube, I, I'm a lot more comfortable, I guess you could say, diving right in to the weeds. And so, so many of my videos, it has been me just diving into the weeds and I have been meeting more and more people to tell me like, what the heck are you talking about? I, I see your your YouTube channel, but I'm confused. I see some of your tweets. I'm intrigued, but I'm confused. And based on how my personality is, which we'll talk about later, it is very daunting for me to clearly explain um, the logical framework of something. Um, This has been something that's been really weighing on me. So what I'm going to attempt to do in this episode is kind of zoom out for a second so that we have a greater understanding of what the rest of this podcast is going to be about and what, and we'll have other episodes that are more going in the weeds and interviewing other personality types and type interactions and stuff like that. But really, I want to address sort of the elephant in the room here is that this podcast is about 16 personality patterns that were inspired by Carl Jung, popularized by the MBTI or the Myers-Briggs type indicator. But if you're a millennial or a Gen Z watching this, you might be even more familiar with the 16 personality types quiz that has kind of gotten viral online. Now, I just wanna say that quiz that you're thinking about and you're wondering like what your type code is, if you've heard of like the ENFJ, INFJ, the four letter type code, the 16 personalities quiz is actually based off of the big five. So the big five personality indicator is a trait-based model. And what we're talking about here today is a type 
model. Um, we're talking about 16 holistic type patterns that while they were popularized by the MBTI, the MBTI is not the only, um, I guess, people organization talking about it. There are other type scholars who have gone on to write books about these patterns. Um, there are other uh, personality type certifications that you can get that are based off of basically, uh, Carl Jung was not the only person to begin discussing personality, but Carl Jung's eight cog uh, psychological, or his eight cognitive functions popularized from his book, um, Psychological Types, this kind of started it all um, in the sense that it really catalyzed a whole new way of how people talk about personality. And so there's a lot of that stuff in the weeds that I can get into in later episodes. And if you have a question, feel free to comment. But um, basically, um, what I'm talking about in Psyche Design, the podcast, are these 16 holistic patterns of um, how your mind works, basically. Because these 16 patterns are made up of um, basically eight puzzle pieces within that pattern. The eight cognitive processes, or as Jung called functions, are these eight mental energies of consciousness that we all have access to. But your specific personality type is going to show you the pattern of how you, how, how you access those um, mental energies. And through knowing your pattern, you can kind of open up to what areas of your psyche you might have been asleep to and, you know, which ones are strengths for you. So really when I hear people, when I first meet people who, you know, I tell them I'm into personality type and they want to know what that is, a lot of times there's this reaction where people are worried that, um, that, oh, hold on just a minute. A lot of times people feel like knowing your personality type is going to just put you in a box. And the reason why a lot of people feel that way is because of the way that these instruments operate is that there are these dichotomies where it's like, are you a feeler? Are you a thinker? Are you a sensor? Are you an intuitive? And whenever you approach it like that and you make people um, ask these this or that questions, people can feel backed into a corner and just confused because they know that they do both. And that's the thing is that you do do both. Everyone does all of the eight cognitive um, processes. We all have access to all of it. And so that's what's really confusing. But knowing your personality type actually opens things up for you and allows you to see things in a different way. Because the reality is um, often we think we're using all of our mental capacity, but we're not. We're only using a sliver of that mental capacity that has been basically a habit of what your mind prefers to do. So really the main value, in my opinion, of personality type theory and understanding what these 16 patterns are and what the eight uh, cognitive functions are is that it is a language of the psyche. So when you have a language, it helps you understand what's going on in the psyche, which can open up the door for so many other things. And that's what I mostly want to talk about in this video slash podcast. I'm used to saying video. So if we, we can think of um, these functions as like a vocabulary, and whenever we have a vocabulary for something that's going on internally, um, it can open up a new way of understanding and it can also allow us to communicate it more to others. And like a language, it's not something that's tangible. Um, personality type is not 
about just your behavior externally. These um, 16 holistic patterns are all about um, how you mentally, it's like your mental wiring and how you naturally unravel as a person. And if you like being aware of um, these terms uh, as a vocabulary, it adds to your own awakening and self-growth and self-discovery process because suddenly, as opposed to feeling like you have an invisible obstacle or an invisible enemy that is against you, you are aware of the fact that there are parts of your psyche that are in the shadow that actually it might feel like an invisible enemy to you. So for example, um, as an ENFJ personality type, my dominant um, function or process is extroverted feeling. And my inferior process is introverted thinking. And so before I knew about personality type, I did not know what introverted thinking was. It was a whole area of my brain that I basically didn't really access. And when I did access it, it was during times of stress. And having type as a language can allow me to see whenever I'm in a problem, like, oh, okay, I know what that thing is. It, it is like a light bulb that com comes off. I, I understand oh, my, if I, my psyche is divided by eight, essentially, um, this unknown territory is suddenly less unknown. So really, this podcast, Psyche Design, we are, it's for those who want to dive deep into your psyche. And we are um, scuba divers. We are going down deep into the area that we, uh, that, might be dark and in the shadow basically and we're giving a name to it when you can put a name to something it as far as the way your mind works it just kind of gets your mind on board and there's an understanding there it makes it just a lot easier for things to click into place it can increase your discernment and um, really just self-understanding. Self-understanding is the number one thing. I talk about self-growth and the self-discovery process and a lot of these words, they might feel like they're synonymous and they kind of are, but really it's self-understanding is the key because if you think of each of these 16 personalities as having their own uh, uh, the own way that their gears turn internally. It's like, you know, which gear turns what. And so whenever you're thinking it's, it's almost allows like this sort of metacognition where as opposed to just thinking, you have an awareness that is above what you're, what you're thinking uh, because you're aware of the way that yourself is already organized because we already are a system. Humans are a living system, just as all parts of nature exists in a system. And so the terms of extrovert, introvert, feeling, thinking, and so on, these are just ways for our brain to better understand the system that we're living in. And it's not meant to put you in a box. It's not and the reason why it's difficult for psychologists to even discover if this is real or not real is because um, we are talking about something um, intangible here. And especially since we're describing the psyche, the psyche is um, spiritual in nature, you know, uh, because we're talking not just about the tangible world, but also the the intangible and the, and the spiritual it's the combination of both it's com it's holistic it is who you are right now on earth your body the way the way you think the way you feel the way you sense the way you intuit and it's also um the essence of that 
that is bigger than you or beyond you. Um, when we're talking about the self, we're talking about something that is um, evolving and ever-changing and expansive. So whenever we use this tool as a growth tool, we're essentially figuring out how is my self organized naturally as a system. And then it's like, okay, my self is organized in this way with this set of mental processes. That is just the natural way that my ego functions. And it basically allows you to see the tracks for if you wanted to uh, basically catapult your growth and turn those gears, you see the tracks that you're on because you understand the lay of the land. So I also want to contrast this a little bit from how other uh, self-growth systems operate. So I'm very interested in astrology, in Enneagram, in tarot, in um, even more, um, even like new age beliefs regarding like your chakra system, um, metaphysics, stuff like that. And a lot of people in the self-help community, when they're talking about growth, um, they might be talking about healing your traumas or processing an emotion, uh, becoming more confident, becoming more, you know, building self-love. All of that stuff is very important, but personality type stuff, like the design of your psyche what we're really talking about is the way your ego functions. Now, the way your ego functions is very important if you're doing any sort of work where you want to um, transcend or awaken. Because if you don't know how your ego functions or how your mind works, then you're missing this huge piece of the puzzle. You're only trying to like heal your core wounds, but you don't know how your mind is actually creating the wounds. So that is a big thing that I feel like a lot of people that are interested in self-development could really benefit from understanding personality. And so if you are a personality enthusiast listening and you have a skeptical friend, maybe um, have them listen to this episode. Let me know, what do you think? Um, because th this is a big area of contention that made me really want to start this podcast is because I feel like um, there's this whole area of growth that, that I'm not seeing as talked about in the self-help community because whenever people think about self-care and healing, it's all, um, it's like they don't know, it's like our ego is laying down this grid of how we think and it's like there's these rules of how we operate that we can we can bend them we can transcend them Carl Jung talks about the transcendent function which could be a whole other episode on its own that is basically a function that exists outside of your um, core eight mental functions that is kind of um, its main mechanism is to transcend and alchemize um, the way that you think. So just because your type operates with these rules and you're, it might be upsetting, it might be upsetting to think about, I guess, that um, there's basically this grid or there's this very predictable way in which you think. Um, which I could talk about that later. But yeah, there's basically this predictable way that you operate based on your preferences and based on the way your mind naturally works. But understanding the language of it allows you to uh, really use your talents, be more aware of your weaknesses so that you aren't constantly tripping on them. So it's basically just shining a light on the darkest parts of your mind and allowing your ego to just see what's happening. It's basically allowing your ego to get on board with your journey. 
And people always talk about the ego as like a, this bad word, right? It, it's your ego is completely against your growth. Well, what if your ego actually understood what was happening and you fed your ego the right information? That's what understanding your type can do is if you can have self-understanding, that's basically, it is a bridge between your ego and your higher self because you're allowing your ego to understand in layman's terms how you operate um, because you're, you know, there doesn't have to be this, this tension. Um, most of the tension that you feel between your ego and your higher self has to do with the fact that your ego is, um, trying to run things blind. It doesn't know where it's going. It, it has this self-preservation instinct because you're a human, you know, we are animals that you are a human that, um, you know, um, you are completely unique. You're, and that, um, it's that, it's that human self-preservation instinct of the ego that really needs to understand what it's working with, I guess. Um, I might think about that more later, but so if we're talking about the vocabulary, let's just give a basic overview of what some of this vocabulary is. And then um, I can go deeper into what these uh, terms mean in individual episodes. Oh, but actually before I get into that, I wanna talk a little bit about what these 16 patterns are a little bit more is that your 16 patterns, at each of you have a pattern, which is your innate core self, which is basically your mind and your ego unraveling to become uh, even more yourself. And it is this path of ego development that happens in your psyche. If you follow that pattern, it naturally develops. So don't think of this as anything that you have to do or achieve because you already are unraveling and growing just by nature of living. So this pattern is constant, but it's also alive. And um, your preferred cognitive functions are basically just the areas of your psyche that your ego is more familiar with but we all use all eight of the cognitive processes and the ones that we're less aware of are just in this, in your shadow. So that's why this podcast is called Psyche Design because I really wanna help people understand the way that their unique psyche is designed so that we can use this information to evolve to a greater understanding of who we are because really these eight cognitive processes, they're basically just um, if you take consciousness and you split it in eight, each of them is a type of consciousness. And so to become more aware of our other processes and to allow that pattern to unravel and grow is basically allowing us to increase our consciousness. So if you are into spirituality and self-growth and you want to increase your consciousness or become more enlightened, I believe that this tool is key because if you do not understand the way your ego naturally works, then you're always going to be fighting against your ego. And you're always going to be feeling this internal resistance between the part of you that wants to grow beyond. Um, and then the human part of you that is keeping you stuck. So what we really want to do is we want to embody our higher selves into our human selves. We want our ego to understand what's happening. We don't want to live a double life of this spiritual enlightened version of ourselves that comes out sometimes, but then the moment you really feel your humanity, um, you get stuck because your ego traps you. You know, um, if your ego understands what's happening, then 
you know, trust me, your ego doesn't want obstacles. Your ego wants life to be um, better and easier. Um, that's that self-preservation part of you. And so it's kind of like, um, it, it's kind of like building a bridge, I guess you could say, between your animal self and your higher self to kind of feed this knowledge um, to it. And, you know, I might be talking here with a little bit of an intuitive bias, which um, as an intuitive, I, my ego will um, kind of resonate more with my higher self and see it as I have higher wisdom that I'm trying to bring down. Whereas not everyone views it that way. You might view it more as you are a human who is looking and seeking answers beyond you. Um, but either way, I'm trying to talk about how those two aspects can kind of come together and build a bridge. So this pattern that we all have of our innate core self, it is not a skill. Anybody can develop skills in each of these areas of competencies. Um, and it's also not a behavior. So that's what is confusing. Um, that's what's kind of confusing whenever you're taking the personality test where it asks you about your behavior is because your behavior might be driven by your pattern because your pattern has these core needs and talents um, that is pushing you somewhere. It's kind of like how if you're right-handed versus left-handed. Um, you prefer using your right hand if you're right-handed. It doesn't mean that you can't literally pick up a pen with your left, but the way that this pattern works is it, it, the way you um, judge the world and the way you perceive the world, it happens so naturally as though it just as naturally as when you naturally used your right hand, if you're right-handed. But there's also the developed and contextual selves that influence your behavior, your identity, and your overall personality or persona that you bring to the world. So in different contexts, you're going to show off different sides to yourself. Um, I'm showing off a different side to you guys right now than I do at my nine to five job. And I'm, I show a different side of myself to my partner than I'm showing to you right now. Um, everyone can relate to that. And that's part of the reason why it could be so difficult for people to find their types if they're using a test is because they know that they act differently in different situations. And also your developed self. Um, that's the self that, um, that's the part of you that is, has been influenced by where you've been and the people that have been in your life, like in your development, in your childhood the pressures that you faced from society or from your parents or from loved ones or from traumas that you've experienced. So let's, let's go in just a little bit into what the language is because there's all these different terms that you're going to want to know. And if you, um, if you hear anyone talking about type, these are really the terms you'd want to know is that there are two energetic orientations. Um, so let's say you have consciousness, there's all of it. You can split it into um, the two orientations is introversion and extroversion. Um, a lot of people are already kind of familiar with that. Um, introversion is more of a receptive yin flow of energy where extroversion is a more activating yang flow of energy. And then there's the four uh, mental elements or functions. There is feeling, thinking, sensing, and intuition. And if you are in each of these four um, functions are connected to elements or the four main elements, that's why there's four of them. Feeling is connected with water. Thinking is connected with air. Sensing is connected with earth. And intuition is connected with fire. 
So um, each of those mental um, elements um, can be expressed in the two different orientations. So four times two, that equals eight. And that's how we get the eight mental energies. And so that would mean that there is an introverted feeling, extroverted feeling, um, introverted thinking, extroverted thinking, introverted sensing, extroverted sensing, and introverted intuition and extroverted intuition. So you could think of those eight energies as like active water and um, receptive water. Though that's just if if you're familiar already with the elements, like if you're in astrology or tarot, if you have that background, then that might be a quick and easy way to just get what I'm talking about. But if you're not already familiar with the elements, I will go into that deeper in another episode. Um, but those are the core eight mental energies or cognitive functions. And each of the 16 types have a different stack or order of how those functions operate in like a hierarchy where one of them is your leading role or your hero. One of them is like the CEO in charge of your entire personality. And so, um, and then you also have a supportive function that you lean on whenever you need help from that dominant function and, and so on. There, uh, there are four of those that tend to be more above the surface and in the ego's awareness. And then the other four um, are in your shadow that you are ones that your ego doesn't really identify with and you think of as not self. But that doesn't mean that they are not important. They just aren't key parts of your personality and they might not be something that you've developed unless you've absolutely had to. So out, out of these four um, mental elements, feeling, thinking, sensing, and intuition, we have the creative functions and the experiential functions. Now these are kind of two terms that I came up with, but it's based off the fact that how Carl Jung talks about perceiving and judging. So judging, you can either judge with thinking or feeling. And judging is basically your assessment of what's happening. Um, you could do that with either thinking or feeling. And I, I call this the creative functions because these are the mental energies that can create reality through knowledge. Um, whereas the experiential functions or perceiving is either intuition or sensing, which these are energies that you, it, that experiences reality by being. So um, everybody's dominant function is going to be in one of those, either creative or experiential. And then your um, supporting role function is going to be in the, the opposite. So for example, for me as an ENFJ, I um, extroverted feeling or um, active feeling or active water is going to be my um, leading function. And that is a way that, that that's more of a creative, it is my mind making an assessment on the information that I see um, through feeling. And then because you can't just be doing, you can't just be judging all day long, there's kind of this ebb and flow where if you lead with something that is more making your own assessment on something, um, then after that um, is the experience. Um, introverted intuition is my supporting role where it is how I experience reality and it's through my uh, personal intuition. It is through receptive, um, receptive intuition, personal intuition. Um, there are, there's a lot of different keywords that you'll see are kind of connected with introverted and extroversion um, that we, we'll, we could talk about. But um, basically, um, 
These are the main sort of vocabulary here, feeling, thinking, sensing, intuition, introversion, extroversion. Um, and I guess that's really all I wanted to talk about in this episode. Um, but really it's just that I want to have conversations about transformation and how our own awareness can open up the ego so that the ego can allow more light to move through the psyche. And when you have more awareness of these eight cognitive functions, you become more aware of paradoxes. And then these polarities uh, automatically will create tension within you, which then breeds creation and transformation. Um, and really um, being aware of these um, eight cognitive functions doesn't mean that you're changing your personality pattern. It just means that your mind is more open and aware uh, and allows transformation to flow through you and happen to you naturally. And I just, these eight cognitive functions, I believe that they are the key to like so many things. They're the key to creating a business. They're the key to anything being holistic um, because I, I believe that they are the eight holistic, they're the eight types of consciousness is, is really what they are. And the vocabulary of knowing what these eight different types of consciousness are, it can help you understand the way that you naturally um, perceive things and assess things and also um, know the pattern of how your consciousness is unfolding. And also having the understanding is getting your mind on board with the process. Um, I, I don't want there to be any more um, people feeling like their mind's the bad guy and you have to just only trust your heart because your mind and your heart can work together. Your mind um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've already kind of beaten a dead horse here, I believe. I just, I really, really, I really care about this. Um, and I care about it so much that I feel as though there's almost no way for me to adequately describe it, you know. So I really just, I guess, in conclusion believe that seeing this tool as a language for the psyche will help you navigate this what the psyche is personally and also understand more when you bump up against somebody else who um you know is different than you and you so you can learn from that situation and increase your consciousness um and become also more responsible for the parts of your consciousness that you tend to shove into the shadow. And so you can become more embodied and responsible for um, all aspects of yourself. So really understanding your psyche design is about um, embodying yourself, becoming your highest self, um, being able to better navigate um, the hiccups in your interpersonal life and also in your personal life, it is the language that gives an understanding that makes you feel a lot more comfortable diving into these more messy, um, confusing scenarios. Because really, without understanding your, your personality pattern, there tends to be the assumption that everybody operates like you and so you might judge other people as being behind you or as you being ahead. Like for example, for me with my dominant function being extroverted feeling, I might judge people that have poor extroverted feeling as being behind me and in their development, which is not true um, necessarily. Uh, because if someone's inferior function is extroverted feeling, then they are going to be re relying on other strengths 
Um, and it's going to be a little bit harder to access this extroverted feeling wisdom. And each of the eight functions has their own wisdom. And so that's another way that it helps you um, understand other people a lot better. It's because it helps you understand what you're really dealing with. It can get rid of some unnecessary judgments that you might have. Um, it really just makes the whole process of growth so much easier. So much, so much easier. I can't even imagine where I would be without it. And while I do like astrology, astrology is so expansive and so nuanced that it is difficult to know what is causing what, because when you're looking at a chart, there is um, multiple factors at any given time that might be um, related to an energy or an experience um, where this is, it gives you more of a firmer understand. It, it really just, I think, gets your mind on board with what's happening and it gives you more control over what to do about you know the confusing uh aspects of life whenever you feel like there's a fork in the road um you know what you're working with so i rambled a lot there um that was kind of my pitch for why i care about this and stay tuned for more episodes talking about how to honor each of these, um, each of the cognitive functions and also interviews of different people who um, are, are able to show what their type journey has looked like. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. This has been a very difficult episode for me to make for, for some reason. Um, but I really appreciate you listening and hopefully this was eye-opening in some way or made you think about type a little bit differently. So let me know what you think and thank you for listening.